Well, th this will be an opportunity for President Duterte to showcase the remarkable economic achievements of his administration to a global audience because attending the BOA Forum will not only be the top leaders of China, but also top leaders in Asia, as well as the UN Secretary General, the IMF Managing Director. So this is an, an occasion, it, it's, it's being compared to like the Davos Conference for Asia, and it, it is the leading uh, business forum right now that's devoted to Asian issues. And, and so the, pres the significance of the president's participation is that it offers a platform for the Philippines and for President Duterte to be able to discuss you know, the achievements and the challenges faced by his administration and to be able to exchange views with other regional and global leaders as well as learn from the best practices of China, of other countries in the region. The Singaporean Prime Minister will also be here together with the Pakistani, the Mongolian uh, Prime Ministers and other European leaders. So it is quite a gathering of uh, top leaders, select leaders in the international community. And for the President to be invited at this time to come here is a rare opportunity that actually signifies the growing interest in the Philippines and the growing stature of the Philippines in the, in the world stage. Uh, the BFA or the Boam, Boao Forum for Asia has become an annual event held here in Boao in Hainan in the southern, southern China. The original idea actually was how to create a, an economic forum you know, for politicians, for academics, for businessmen to put their ideas together, to exchange ideas. And, and it took its inspiration from, you know, there was in the West, there was the Davos uh, conference in Switzerland. So why not have one dedicated to Asia? And this was the origin of the idea. So it has been going on now, you know, in this, since 2001, 2002. And pres former President Fidel Ramos was one of those who actually originated this idea, who, who, who came up with this concept. And he, he consistently attended the Boa Forum, except that he can't make it anymore this year uh, because of his cutting back on his foreign travel. So, in the past, Philippine presidents have also attended. President uh, Gloria Macapagal Arroyo attended in the past. And so now it's an opportunity for President Duterte to do so. And from what I understand, now that uh, former President Ramos, who's a member of the board and an active member of the board, uh, will not be able to continue, uh, they're thinking of inviting President, former President Arroyo to be a member of the board. And so there will be continuing Philippine presence, Philippine involvement in this. And it's because of the importance in building up the BFA as a forum for Asia to discuss the economic situation. Because Asia is now playing a key role in the global economy. And Asia has become a major source of global economic growth amid the recession in the West, you know, amid the Brexit, the, 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 gr the growing winds of protectionism, the potential of, a, you know, the, the, the cloud of a trade war. It's very important for BFA uh, to play a crucial role in emphasizing the importance of globalization, of trade, of regional integration. And this is where BFA plays a key role in promoting regional economic integration and promoting globalization and sharing prosperity in the region. Well, the gains and the benefits are immense, you know, because it is in this forum 
that we're able to exchange experiences, best practices with other global leaders, including the experience of China, the experience of other successful economies in Asia. You know, Singapore will be attending. Leaders, you know, former leaders from Japan, as well as from South Korea. So top leadership of uh, the leading Asian economies will be here. And so it is not only a networking platform, it is also a platform where you can meet other leaders, meet other academicians and top businessmen from other countries. And in so doing, it actually increases not only the market for goods and services, but the market for ideas and for best practices, which then can be applied to our own economy in our own country. The president is paying a visit for the third time, uh, but this is really a very short visit. This is really just to attend the forum. It doesn't really constitute, you know, it cannot compare to the October 2016 visit or the, the visit to Beijing, you know, because this is really just a, a very brief visit, but it's an opportunity to be able to showcase the Philippine economic achievements in this particular platform. And it's also an opportunity to have the high level discussion again and meeting with President Xi. Actually, President Duterte and President Xi has met, this is going to be at least the, because they met in Beijing in October 2016, and then in Peru the, the following month in an APEC summit, and then in the BRI, the Belt and Road Summit in May, and also in Vietnam during the APEC. So this is going to be the fifth high-level meeting. The, the high-level meetings have a way of, you know, concentrating the work of the two governments towards areas of cooperation. And to, it gives them an opportunity to review what has been achieved so far and what more can be achieved. So if you look at Philippines-China relations, since October 2016, it has taken a dramatic turn, a dramatic improvement can be seen. No? The most obvious is, of course, in the political atmosphere. From an adversarial and almost confrontational relationship, we now have a non-adversarial, non-confrontational, and a friendly and conciliatory relationship, cooperative relationship with China. Basically, the independent foreign policy that is being implemented by the Duterte administration has consisted of not only maintaining relations with traditional partners like the U.S. and Japan, but also opening and improving relations with new partners like China and Russia. On the basis of ASEAN, unity and centrality. So in terms of bilateral relationship, the, aside from the political improvement, the most visible improvement has been in the number, the dramatic growth in tourism. Now you have a, almost a million Chinese tourists that came last year, which is more than double the previous year or almost double the previous year. And, and compared to the to 2016, it's, it's, it's been a remarkable growth. And I think this year we'll try to aim for 1.5 to 2 million Chinese tourists. So China has jumped from being number four to number three to now number two in terms of tourism. That is one. In terms of trade, China has now become the leading trade partner of the Philippines. And, and the most visible result has been the, if you go around Chinese markets now, it's the, the sale of Philippine bananas, of Philippine mangoes, pineapples, you know. So the dramatic growth in terms of uh, exports from the Philippines of tropical fruits. And we're trying now to expand that market. In addition, we're gonna, there has been, of course, the, the rehabilitation centers that were built in Luzon, but also now in Mindanao. And, and so there is this 
you know, in terms of support for the, for the president's anti-drug campaign. Then the military cooperation in terms of anti-terrorism, you know, there has been uh, at least two shipments of military uh, equipment or weapons that can be used in the anti-terrorist campaign. There is a third shipment that has just arrived in the Philippines. This consists of like several fast patrol boats as well as the what we call the RPG. These are the rocket propelled grenades that the military will be able to use, all uh, granted for free. And then you will have the infrastructure projects. Uh, the, the most visible that you will see soon, I think it will start in the next couple of months, would be the building of the two bridges uh, across the passing. You know, one near uh, Binondo, near Chinatown, and the other one near Rockwell or Guadalupe. Yeah. So these will be the initial ones. And there's a whole first basket of projects that are being completed in terms of the loan agreements. The first one will be the Chico Irrigation Project in Northern Luzon. And then there's going to be the Kaliwa Dam. This is a dam project, a water source for the National Capital Region. And then the rail project going from, from Manila, Calamba to Naga. That one will take a little more time, but this is in the works right now. They're talking now of a second round of projects, which will include such things as a Davao Expressway, uh, as well as the Manila, uh, the Clark Subic Railway. There's a whole, there's a, a group of projects in, under the second basket that is under discussion. And then there's uh, the growth in Chinese foreign investment in the Philippines. They're starting from a low base, but the growth has been dramatic over the past year. And there will be more because a lot of feasibility studies, a lot of due diligence work is being done, and a lot of negotiations are happening. But a lot of this is happening between Chinese companies or Chinese businessmen and Philippine, their Philippine counterparts. So a lot of, a lot of uh, things are, are developing. In August, on the cultural field, the Ballet Philippines will come to Beijing to perform. So this is part of the, of the cultural exchange. And then you now have more Ch Filipino students who are enrolling in Chinese universities. Some are doing language studies. Others are doing uh, masteral or doctoral studies. So there are a lot of opportunities in terms of scholarships uh, available to Filipino students, you know, both to do language studies or to do bachelor studies on scholarship. And for those who want to, to do graduate education, there are also quite a number of scholarships that are available. So a whole range. What is basically happening is this. We have decided to put the disputes not at the center, but rather to put it on one side. And so you, you basically go on two tracks. You continue to discuss the disputes through diplomatic channels through the bilateral talks with China. We've had uh, two sessions with China in this regard. As for the, non, the items, the whole area where there are no disputes, we are fast tracking them, you know, economic, trade, culture, arts, science, education. So there's a whole range and that is what is happening. And that, is, that accounts for this dramatic improvement in bilateral relations. But if I can just summarize the independent foreign policy, what it means basically is that we try to be friends to all and enemies to none. We do not wish to be involved in the great power rivalry that is happening in our region because you have, on the one hand, the traditional role of the U.S. that used to be the dominant power, and you have the rising China, the rise of China, which is trying to, cha which is now challenging the dominant role of the U.S. So this is the strategic picture we find ourselves in. What we want to do is to be friends with both the U.S. and China. We do not wish to be considered as a pawn or as a, a, a puppet of anyone. We want, what we want to do, it is complicated, but we want to navigate an independent course so that we can maintain good relations with both. 
At the same time, we want to maintain good relations with Japan, with all the major powers, Russia, India. But the basis would be close unity with our ASEAN neighbors, Southeast Asian neighbors. And on the basis of ASEAN centrality and unity, we want to develop relations with all the major powers. So we want to compartmentalize our bilateral relations, for example, with China, from the strategic rivalry what, that is happening between the U.S. and China. And this is useful, particularly now that there is the threat of trade war between the two. We want to shield the Philippines from the negative impact of that. And we call on both sides to exercise restraint so that the trade war, will, which, in which there will be no winners, will not continue and will not adversely affect the Philippine economy. The Filipino people should be rest assured that we're trying to develop friendly relations with China on the basis of equality and sovereign, sovereign uh, rights. So that on the basis of sovereign equality, we can further improve our relations without giving up our claims our, on sovereignty sovereign rights and maritime jurisdiction. At the same time, recognizing that some of these issues cannot be solved right away, but that we will proceed to do so through peaceful and diplomatic means. At the same time, there are a lot of opportunities in our relationship with China so that we can benefit and maximize the economic benefits for the Filipino people, as well as the benefits from cultural, scientific, and other exchanges with China, including military cooperation against terrorism, including Coast Guard to Coast Guard cooperation in terms of safeguarding uh, the livelihood of our fishermen. So on the whole, I think the Filipino people should be happy and confident that President Duterte will continue to forge an independent course that will keep us on the course of maximizing the benefits for the Filipino people on the basis of our national interests.